Now, nine schools have already booked their spots at the quarterfinals of this year's National Science and Maths Quiz, with 18 schools yet to join. Exciting contests are expected to take place today, uh, with schools like Bishop Herman, Accra Academy uh, competing. But even before this morning's contest begins, a former contestant who's now a medical doctor has been mentoring the students. Nancy Mefadradosi has been speaking to Dr. Mary Aram Asinyo, who's been recounting her moments on stage some 18 years ago. Aram Ashinyo was our mentor for today. Thank you very much for your time. If you can kindly come closer to me. How are you doing? I'm fine, MFA. How are you too? I'm doing good. And how's the experience standing up there? And just realizing that you've been there about some years ago. Yes, I, I think it was a, a good um, experience and a good opportunity for me to give back um, to younger ones. Um, I was on stage 18 years ago representing Ibri Girls on the National Science and Maths Quiz. So coming here today was actually a reflective moment for me about how far I had gone, but also a very happy experience about a few words that I was delivering to the young ones that would go a long way, hopefully, to motivate them and make sure that they achieved their dreams whatever they wanted to be in the next few years. We'll talk about what you told them, but I'm interested in that 18 years ago. When you were standing there, you saw the various seats there. Did you, do you remember any moment on stage that you that is still there, that came to mind right, as, right when you entered the building? Yes, I, I really do remember. I remember that it was not very easy even climbing to stage. And back in school, I was a very quiet person. And it, it, it's, it's a lot of tension. And knowing that it was also the first time I was going to be on TV, it was not that simple. So as we watch them sitting down there so relaxed, a lot is going on inside them. And, and it's actually a, um, it's a lot of tension. I remember it was so much tension. And I remember that even when the contest started, most of my answers, I had to write it down for my other colleague who was more bold and vocal. I think she saved me on that day. It was from the middle of the context that I was actually able to speak up a lot. So it's not an easy thing climbing those um, platforms. Yeah, we must congratulate them. Yeah. Which school took you out, by the way? It was Pope John's. Yes, and we were leading them until the last but one round. So that was very painful. And I think that at the end of the day, they won the overall also, if I remember. So that meant that our team was very strong. So we cried a little bit and we went home. It's part of life. But yeah. I, I, there's been talks about why girls' schools have also not been able to win the competition. From your experience, do you think there is anything that intimidates the girls when they get on stage? Or what do you think, in your view, what do you think is the reason? I think first, girls themselves have to believe that they can. It's also not that easy for them to believe that they can. That's why mentorship is very important because you are growing up in a culture where you are told, hey, you are a girl, so you can't do ABC. These things are for men. So it's about believing that they can. But also, let's make sure that the systems that enable them to have the right science and math education are in place, the right equipment, the right laboratory, the right content are in place so that they would also be able to come up. But I think they are doing very well. And given the opportunity, girls will do much more better. I, I heard you talk um, on stage and you talked about the fact that you wanted to be a model. I mean, growing up, I didn't know what I wanted to be, but then I, I, there's a sharp difference between being a model and going the science way. So how did all that happen? Yeah, so I wanted to be a model, and uh, I remember my dad used to say that, oh, models were supposed to be tall and lanky. I was lanky, but not tall. So <laughs> then my dad was always enticing me about, well, you know, if you learn hard, I'll give you one million. And those days, one million was a lot of money for shopping and all that. So you will go back to your room and really learn hard. And before I realized, I found myself doing well. And although um, growing up, I didn't attend one of the very best schools in primary school when I got to Avery Girls I was doing very well I was always topping my class so it motivated me more and I actually realized that okay so my dad wanted me to be a doctor I was actually on the way to studying uh, science and going to medical school and I could also serve my society equally in, in a way so I developed the passion for it so sometimes our parents want us to be things we don't want to be 
it's sometimes good, sometimes not also good, because sometimes what you're really good at may not be what they are pushing you to do, but sometimes also helps you to realize what your other potentials could be. And I don't regret really finding myself where my dad pushed me. I'm thankful to him and making the best out of the situation. I yeah. see that the, the, the profession is very, you must be very careful, very diligent. How is it for you? How's the experience been for you? Nancy Emefa Jadrosi, they're speaking to uh, a doctor who was a, a contestant 18 years ago, now mentoring the students. Interesting, isn't it? It's streaming live. I mean, the contest for today on our Facebook page, Draw News on TV. You're watching News Desk with me, Benis Abubeidu Lansa. Coming up shortly in business, AGI seeks partnership with European investors to improve gains on the Economic Partnership Agreement. Details shortly.